Tangeline Bolton, welcome to The Career Musician. We are very stoked to have you, and I must say, quite impressive, because I've been a professional career musician for a long time, and I am definitely impressed with how much traction you have gained in your career in such a short time. So kudos to you and welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Very yeah. grateful to be speaking with you. Okay, so we have lots of ground to cover. So I've been yes. changing the uh, focus here on, on the podcast interviews because I wanna get to the meat and potatoes real quick. People are dying to know certain things. And one of those certain things are how did you get to where you're at now? Like, how did you scale as a career musician? How did you go from being, oh, I love playing piano, and I noticed you started piano very young, and this is fantastic, and I love it, to all of a sudden being, wow, I'm gonna do this as a career. I went to Berklee College of Music to start, so that, that gave me an, a nice foundation, especially for like playing different types of styles. I started off as a classical pianist, so that was my training prior to Berkeley. But getting the more contemporary and jazz chops under my belt, I would say really prepped me for the scoring world because a lot of times you have to switch between genres. And sometimes when you're a younger composer, it's great to be able to bounce around and experiment in different genres. So that's where I got my start. And then I transitioned to Hans Zimmer's company where I interned. A good friend of mine, Tori, at the time was able to get me an interview. So then I started interning there and then got hired and then met a lot of the composers who worked over at Hans's company as well as working for Hans and his team as a studio assistant. So that was a great foundation for growing my network and being able to see how so many amazing composers in the fields work professionally and how they sustain their business. So let me interject there because there's so much there that's very powerful. Okay, so first of all, you go to Berkeley and you get diversified. I always say diversify or die. You have to have a diversified yeah. skill set and be adept at many genres, like you said. That's great. But now you go to LA and you were able to get this interview through a friend. Yes. That whole process had to be quite maybe nerve wracking or a little bit, you want to tell us a little bit more about that, how that all went down? Sure. It's a funny thing because I feel like when you're at a music school, especially, you feel the need to maybe wow everyone with all your technical music knowledge, which is great to have under your belt once you're working professionally. But a lot of the time when you're doing these interviews, people just want to see your personality and see that you can work well in a team environment and that you're not someone who's gonna stir the pot too much when it comes to working with others. So that's definitely some advice I would give maybe a fresh graduate. When you do your interviews, don't feel the need to, to be too um, technical in, in the music stuff. Maybe sprinkle a little bit of that in, but show that most importantly, show that you're a great collaborator and you work well with a team. Exude humility, right? Yeah. yeah, I love that. Okay, so the first few weeks or days, whatever, working at Hans Zimmer's place, what was that like? How did you settle in? You mentioned that were you interning in the, you were a studio assistant and what does that entail exactly? Sure. So I was, yeah, studio assistant and a runner. So just doing whatever the studio and Hans's team needed. It all was very day to day, but a lot of just general things for the studio. Sometimes that meant me running the desk too. Really, it would just vary day to day. So having this, a personality where you're down for everything being like spur of the moment, <laughs> even starting from a lower level up until now, that is still the skill that I have today is not getting too surprised when something comes in, maybe an email of some last minute revision I have to tackle or a new cut that comes in, uh, always being down for something that's a spur of the moment. That's right. And that makes perfect sense. That is one of the, like, the biggest philosophies that we have to adhere to to do this kind of work, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. People always ask, hey, how do you get into composing for film, TV, and multimedia. And these are the exact characteristics that you need 
to to embody to really be effective in the game so to speak yeah definitely so really that is the crux of the matter being able to just move fast no matter what it is yeah and, definitely and you probably find that still today in all of your work that's true you mentioned revisions talk about that because a lot of times people get sometimes musicians have a tendency to wear their hearts on their sleeves and they get offended but explain the actual process of a revision and how you as the composer you really need to react in the proper manner sure with revisions oh that's an interesting one because i feel like it it depends on who you're working with and how deep of a collaboration it is. I would recommend that to a lot of younger composers watching, really try to dig as deep as you can into the project and the person. You don't have to go dig too deep, but it's always good too. Just so you can gain a, an understanding on the collaborator that you're working with, their preferences, what kind of music they like. Music is subjective, so everyone has a certain way of listening and their preferences. So when it comes to revisions, a lot of times the, the best way to tackle them, especially if you're still a little unsure as to what they might want, is to give an alt sometimes. A lot of times when I tackle something and I'm still a little unsure, providing an alt will give me a fresh perspective. Way to sit down and say, okay, let me take one more stab at this and with fresh ears. And a lot of times they end up liking the alts. So that's a good tip. And then also, oh, I had a great mentor when I did, when I was in the Sundance Labs, when I was a fellow in 2020. Jermaine Franco, incredible musician. She My was, buddy, I love Jermaine. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. I worked with her with John Powell for quite a few films. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, one of her tips was, what was it? It was, if a note is, for example, if a note is go bigger, I want this to be bigger, go a little bigger than you normally would. Like whatever your normal level of big is, go even bigger than that. Because it's, first of all, they'll probably end up liking it. And then second of all, if you went a little too big, you can just scale it down a little bit. So that's a great, that's definitely a great tip. That's an excellent tip because it's easier to scale it back than it would be yes. to make it even bigger, right? Yes. That's so awesome. Okay. So now let's talk about this because something that, you know, is even in all of your information online, people talk about, or basically your bio talks about how you really dive into the development of the characters, studying the characters and how to find thematic pieces that really embody who those characters are. So let's say you get a cut, you get your first cut of something what is the process at that point when i'm actually seeing the footage i have a palette already developed i really do try to start that digging and getting my homework in before i'm really diving in so i have my palette already established based on some early conversations with either the showrunner or the director so i guess yeah it really depends Okay. Uh, on the care on the character for example i guess we can talk about warrior man a little bit lilith her sister lilith her character in season two specifically she goes through a really interesting arc and she has a pretty transformative experience i started with this instrument i actually have it over here you can pull it out so this is a lyre it's very it's not tuned right now so i played this instrument very like ethereally with a lot of reverb show her background and her commitment to the OCS, the order of the cruciform sword. So her backstory is she's she, her, she comes from a lineage of warrior nuns. So she should have been next in line to be the warrior nun, but Ava was actually the one who became the warrior nun. So she's going through a lot of this internal struggle. So I wanted to use this instrument, to show that, show her past, show her going back to her mom. And I wanted that kind of internal struggle of self-reflection. And then she finally starts to accept who she's becoming, which is very different than the warrior nun. It's the complete opposite of the warrior nun. So by the middle and the end, she starts going through this pretty intense transformation. 
So I wanted to play with the word contrast. So I took this instrument and I'm like, how can I play this in a more barbaric, aggressive, shrieking way? So I decided to bow it really aggressively. So, so you hear in some of the fight scenes when she's starting to arm that her sound starts getting more shrieking, aggressive, piercing. And that was one of the instruments that I used for her. So I try to play with that. Aside from just themes and melodic content, how can I use instruments in different ways? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, the timbre of different instruments and the tonal qualities are really informing who the character is, their identity. I love the fact that you just gave us a breakdown on that character. Thank you, because that's exactly sure. what it takes. Composers listening or people who want to be composers like Tangeline, you have to really do your homework and take that deep dive. I think it's just fun to, to play something that I love is, aside from just having a strong theme, how can we for that concept to sonics too that really intrigues me that's awesome hey so let's rewind a little bit and let's talk about the early stages of a project so you get the gig you're chosen to be the composer that's all been done with your manager and the agents and everybody signed the deal all right so now you're good to go you start off like you said hopefully in the beginning very co closely working with the director the showrunner you're getting scripts right you get a script and you start crafting concepts do you have a spotting session after they do have some some basic footage and then talking about the dailies so explain that whole process to somebody who sure. might not know all of that terminology and what's entailed sure i'm going to keep talking about warrior Nun since yeah. um, that's my most recent project that came out I, I began reading the scripts, had some early conversation with, conversations with Simon Berry, the showrunner, so we could deep dive a little bit into a few of the characters and maybe a couple themes that he might want. And from there, I started kind of putting together my sonic palette based on what I was reading and the images that were in my head from what I read, but yeah, the images that it was evoking. And from that point, I sent over, I think a a few demos right when they began shooting and then I would get some feedback from Simon and he was very busy so whenever I would get some feedback it was great I'd be sitting there oh when is he gonna listen and then he would respond and say oh, this is amazing or this one's great so it, it was good to get his feedback but once I received um, dailies for those that don't know what those are basically when a crew shoots they will upload all of the daily footage basically it's for the editors to start editing to all the footage and other people can get put on the dailies too so i got put on those so that i could start seeing the images a bit earlier and they started informing more of my decisions musically too so after the dailies these aren't always even things that composers need to do like we you don't need to really always read the script or look at the dailies i just like to because it informs a lot of my creative decisions and it helps me really understand the story and any questions I may have, I can usually answer them myself by going back to the script. Once, once everything is edited, we'll have a spotting session once we're locked. Locked picture means it's pretty much done. Locked doesn't mean much to me anymore, but to most people it means done-ish. We'll have a spotting session. It's basically where everyone gets together a lot of the creative team will get together, the showrunner, he's who, whoever wants to be involved. We'll get together and we will watch each episode. Or if it's a, Kelly's coming again. Or if it's a film, it, you'll watch the film. And we will have creative talks about each scene. Yeah, in this spotting session, we will all get together and we'll talk creatively about each scene where there's music. Either the temp music there will already inform my decisions. The showrunner will, or the director, will say, I love this temp music in here. Or if it's a piece of my music, we'll say, oh, I really like what you did here. Or I don't really like what's here. Let's make it a little more ominous. Let's make it a little more heart-wrenching, something like that. So having those deep conversations about mood, tone, maybe certain instruments that are not evoking the mood that they want, 
they might mention, I don't like this synth. It's a little too, they might not know why. So that's the composer's job to dissect. So maybe they won't like a certain synth, but they don't know why. But it might be too, there was too much high end or it's really distracting to, to the dialogue. So that's an, another skill for the composer to dice. I love it. It's just like the typical producer composer's job. We have to be great interpreters, right? We have to interpret sure. other people's, what they're envisioning with, within their own terms, because they don't always know the musical terminology. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very helpful skill. Hey, tell us a little bit about your workflow and your rig. Are you, do, is there a certain DAW you prefer? Do you work in different things depending? And what's your setup like? I use Logic X for my DAW. Sometimes I use Ableton if it's a little more beat driven mm. and then Pro Tools as well because it's like the industry standard. But Logic is my main DAW for composing. Love it. I love it. It's creative. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same. I use all three depending on the application. It's something I think is really important. I'm glad you said it. Pro Tools as the industry standard, especially when you get to the audio realm and now you're actually bouncing tracks and mixing and building stems and whatnot. Talk about that because a lot of young composers don't understand why Pro Tools is still the industry standard, or even if you don't know why exactly, but just talk about the fact that it is. <laughs> I know. It's just really deep rooted in like the ecosystem of film and TV. And you also go with like the editors. A lot of times they're using Avid systems too. It just is what it is, <laughs> I would say. It's great to know Pro, Pro Tools. What I would say too is if you want, it's great to maybe get start thinking about how you would want your team to look down the line, like having someone who will be your mixer. I have an incredible mixer for just in general. I'm Hotel Alexander Jang. He's on like Beyonce. He's nominated right now for a Grammy. He's incredible. So I would say just start handpicking or envisioning how you would want your team to look down the line so that you can do more composing as opposed to all the other technical things. It's great to be amazing at technical skills of course. And I've done lots of things for other composers that are very technical. So you should know all your technical stuff. But there is something to be said about expanding and putting a team together. So having someone who can be your mixer is great because a lot of times how you, how you write, it can sound fine, but having that extra person to just refine everything, and make the mix perfect for film and TV, can sometimes be the icing on the cake. A huge difference, it could make or break it. And I love the fact that you mentioned building your team, even if you're not at that point in your career yet, start thinking about it, start envisioning it. And chances are you have people in your inner circle that would be great once you do get up to to the plate, so to speak, to hit that home run. Uh, Hote is great. I worked with him on a Beyonce project with, uh, yes, with, uh, oh my gosh, Sadiq, Raphael Sadiq. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. That yeah. Small world. That's so small world. Yeah. You know how it is. So that's great. So talk, so you mentioned that about your team, your rig, and you have a home studio set up. And then when you go to mix, do you go to other studios? Is that your normal protocol? Yeah. I send it. It's so quick. So I'll send the stuff to Alex and then. Alex is his nickname. And then, yeah, it's, you know how quick it is. It's, I'm, when I'm sending files, I'm already like on the next episode. So it's just, and then he'll mix it, I'll listen, and then he'll send it back and then keep going, basically. That's awesome. Incredible. All right. So we talked about quite a bit how you got here, some of the things you've employed to really root your position in the industry. What do we have looking forward for you? What is, how do you foresee sustainability for Lean Bolton as the composer, artist, your whole vision for a sustainable career? How do you envision that? I would just, I just want to keep, I envision myself just work, continuing to work with people that are just good people, people that I connect with people who are really passionate about their story, people who I get really passionate um, by just hearing how they, they talk about what they're creating. I just want to continue those sort of meaningful collaborations, working on content where 
I can build characters empathetically, do the characters justice, say whatever the story is that needs to be said in the most honest way that I can. So that, that's pretty much how I want to continue my career. Incredible. And what would you have to offer as words of wisdom to the up and coming young composer seeking to do, you know, what you're doing in the same capacity? I would say try to be as focused as you can on your end goal. It's great to have many goals, but the more focused you can be, the more catered you can be towards that one goal that will de- that will inform all of the decisions that you make along the way. I love that. I always talk about focus being the primary source of inspiration because without it, when you just put a little of attention here and there and all over the place, you just get less done, right? Yeah, definitely. It's great to be focused because our subconscious minds are they're always working. So the little decisions that we make throughout the day, we might not realize that we're making these little decisions, but if you are focused, they're all being targeted towards that one thing. That's right. That's right. How did you know that you wanted to be a composer? What was there a moment that you said, oh, that's it? I remember as a kid just being very introspective. I was a very introspective kid on the Shire side. So music was definitely my way of cultivating these emotions. And like I had a funnel where they could all come out. I also have a distinct memory being sad about like Chris, Chris, it's perfect because Christmas is coming up about like taking, it's so silly, taking ornaments off the tree and and just being sad about going on to the next season. So I I remember I start, I wrote a little song about that when I was, that's the earliest memory. I don't know how old I was. I was probably maybe six or seven. Wow. That's young. Yeah. Yeah. I remember writing a song. My piano teacher was like, oh yeah, why don't you write a song about that? So I definitely always had these emotions that I wanted to express. I was definitely doing it already. Love that. I love that. All right. And final question here. This is really important because it's so important to have quality and diversification in the business. And as a female Filipina American, that's a huge right there. I, I hate to say this, but in today's day and age, that's a huge milestone because the industry has been so male dominated for so long and hadn't it hasn't had much diversity culturally. So talk about that because that's again, that's something to be proud of. Yeah, it's interesting because I was definitely one of the few, there's still are, the numbers are still very startling. There are not many females in the industry and same with actors. But yeah, for film composers, it's so low. It's definitely been, it's definitely been like a journey, I would say. But I've always had my head on the set on the prize. So I feel like that's really the only way to navigate it, aside from their people like being allies and helping women, other men helping women too, and maybe putting our names in the hat for opportunities instead of maybe their other male coworkers, like expanding their network a little bit too, as well as initiatives, which are great as well. But definitely me having my head set on my end goal, that's like my shining star that's been like the thing that's kept me going and i'm so grateful too that warren and especially all the fans there's so many amazing fans and so many female fans too i'm i've been so grateful to the warren and fans they're absolutely incredible and the response especially to um, ava's fall even beatrice's theme a theme i wrote for them It's been incredible. I've been loving seeing all their like fan edits on Twitter and everything about that. So I'm grateful. That is, that is great. Look, your trailblazing path for women and young ladies who just look up to you and say, oh, wow, I want to do that. Or maybe they didn't even know about this kind of position and they learn about it from watching and listening to your work. So that's really awesome. Thank you. It's been an incredible experience. I'm excited for the future. The projects that I've been working on are reflective of how I personally view the world and I want everyone else to view the world. Tangeline, thank you so much for being our guest on The Career Musician. Thank you. This has been amazing.